Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the podcast again. And if you are a tech enthusiast looking for how technology alliances are solving industry challenges and empowering people to unlock their full potential, this is the podcast for you. And in this Citrix Ready podcast series, I explore how technology can empower people and organizations to unlock innovation while also engaging customers and being more productive anytime, anywhere and on any device. But today, I want to talk about digital well-being. I mean, do you remember the days where you sat at the same desk next to the same person, nine till five, went home, switched off your brain before doing it all again the following day? But now we are always on. And if your boss was to send a Slack message, email, or something to the WhatsApp group at 11 p.m., you're going to feel compelled to answer. But that can put you on the edge, responding to every notification and vibration on your phone for 17 hours a day, playing this never-ending game of whack-a-mole. It's going to take its toll, isn't it? So this got me thinking, how can software companies ensure that their staff don't burn out and offer to help other teams around the world in other businesses too? But a company called Flexible IT has created something quite unique in the digital wellness tool, which they created to help businesses look after their employees. And they are also a Citrix partner too, who like Flexible IT are also taking digital wellness seriously too. So I think we have a great conversation on our hands here. So I invited Nitin Sharma from Citrix and Nigel Woods from Flexible IT back onto the podcast to talk about how they're working together and also how they're tackling the problem of digital well-being in this world of lone remote working. So let's get them on the podcast now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I'm Nigel Woods. Um, I've been an EUC specialist for over 20 years. Um, I focus on mainly on Citrix technologies uh, and making sure applications are delivered in the most optimised and stable form. Um, my role at Flexible IT is Business Development Manager for Apps to Digital, which is the software that allows us to discover and report on digital wellness, as well as many other features such as application discovery, sizing and migration. Cool. Uh, my name is Nitin Sharma, a senior product marketing manager at Citrix. Uh, my predominantly, I've been at Citrix for about maybe about eight and a half years, I think now, in various roles, starting from sales and moving into marketing. Um, my main focus at Citrix right now is actually part of the workspace services team, and within that, the uh, app and desktop virtualization uh, portfolio. A big warm welcome back to the podcast because we have spoken before. And the only thing different, of course, is the entire world. Everything seems to have completely changed since we last spoke. And remote working at scale is now a reality for businesses of all sizes at the moment. And many employees find that they don't know when to switch off. And digital wellness is a subject that I think we don't explore enough in this world of constant notifications, alerts and distractions that all add to that white noise of always being on. So first of all, Nigel, what does digital wellness mean to you and your team at Flexible IT? Yeah, so we like to use the definition Quartz gave in a recent study with Citrix, which states that digital wellness is defined as tech's ideal state in which it works in harmony with users' physical and mental health. It's a lot of words, but yeah. really digital well-being is essential for positive employee experience. However, according to research, it seems far from reality for many employees at the moment. So when we talk about digital wellness or well-being, people call it either or both, um, we're we're focusing on the impact of technologies and the digital services on people's mental, physical and emotional health. Um, It implies that when interacting with any form of technology, the experience should support our mental and physical health in a measurable way. This means understanding and identifying the positive and negative impacts of engaging with digital activities. Um, With remote working being the new normal for many of these days, being able to promote and maintain digital wellness 
has become even more essential than before. You know, we, we're in a situation at the moment uh, where we have socialized isolation, employment uncertainty, working from home burnout have been a few factors affecting workers' health and well-being at the moment. We have the, another term, digital presenteeism, um, which is a feeling of always having to be a, available. And so people are working past their contractual hours. Um, as you said, Neil, we're always online with emails and uh, various devices. We don't seem to be able to get away from it. Um, so everything is easily accessible and uh, that multiple devices Although it keeps us informed and connected, it's the opposite in some ways as it makes us always looking to see what's happening. And that's what's causing a lot of the issues that we're seeing around mental health issues, around the, the fact that people don't know when to switch off. It's very, very difficult for them to, to understand that. Uh, so, you know, the downside of all of this is um, the imminent stream of notifications and interruptions uh, for employees, not only in the evenings, but during the day. So we, we see we, it's, it's quite difficult to focus on the task you're on because you're deluged with different types of uh, collaboration these days. So from, from a management point of view, uh, the need has, has arisen to give appropriate guidance uh, to care for these remote workers. This sudden change from the office to remote work has sprung upon managers who've never had to manage remote workforce before. And so they've needed to rethink their approaches. So it's not just about the employees, it's about the managers, the management, all the way through uh, at the, these businesses have to think, how do we cope with these people working from home in, in these stages? Where managers working from an office had a clear view of um, on their team's digital work strategies and habits, um, it's not so easy remotely. Um, so this can not only impose on business continuity, but also make a difference between a healthy workforce and one that's not. Whilst remote uh, working has allowed us to gain many positive side effects and has opened up opportunities for some that were not be there before. So we're seeing people volunteering, we're seeing lots of involvement in communities. Uh, it's also infringed on an important and simplistic way of communicating between team members. It's difficult when you don't actually see people in, in the face and talk to people next to them, how to actually understand how they are. Um, your daily check-ins, whiteboard messages, and the quick questions between tasks. It's no longer straightforward. So you're not seeing those um, abilities to communicate like we had before. So therefore, we need specialised tools, uh, which would be critical to keep workforces healthy and safe, wherever location uh, their workplace will be, and uh, whatever device they choose to use. So many great points there, Nigel. And ironically, of course, a notification popped up as you were talking, which kind of highlights that problem beautifully because I think it's so hard to separate our work and home life now. And whether we are sat quietly or focusing on a task, there's always going to be a notification from Slack, email, SMS, Microsoft Team, video conferencing. All these tools are supposed to be making us all more productive, but obviously just making us more busy and we're constantly spinning more and more plates so i'm curious knitting uh, digital wellness a topic important to you all at citrix and and all the clients that you're talking with right now too oh yeah so um i mean we've you know like uh we've of course seen an increase uh in customers looking towards citrix to enable their remote workforce now more than ever I mean, we've, we've been leveraged as, you know, secure mode access technology for, for decades. We've seen, we've been, you know, we're one of the leaders in the industry, but now we are now seeing a, a broader uptick um, within that. So instead of um, organizations having a pocket of their employees working remote, they're now having, you know, like 90 to 95% of their remote, you know, their workforce going remote. Now, as Nigel was mentioning, the fact that there comes some caveats with that, right? Like, how do you ensure uh, the fact that these employees now that maybe they're used to working in collaborative efforts are now being a little bit more isolated? You know, they're also trying to juggle in some of their own personal lives. Like maybe they're, you know, a, a teacher, uh, they're a parent, um, but also has a, you know, they have a day job, but they're also a parent that now has to um, work with their child to kind of ensure that they're doing all the things for remote learning. 
So from our perspective, it's effectively, uh, you know, we, we're, we're kind of looking at our technology as far as like an enabler of at least uh, improving the productivity and the experience when it comes to leveraging technology. Um, you know, we actually have a whole, uh, we've done a number of studies, as Nigel was mentioning, the fact that, you know, it, there's some there's some things that you want to do that, um, you know, ad, attributes that technology should enable from a Disney wellness perspective. Um, and those three things, as we focused on, was just productivity, mobility, and automation, right? So from a productivity standpoint, the technology should be a set of controls, um, you know, maybe set some standards from, you know, when um, you want to block some time out in your schedule or silencing notifications. Um, a, a technology leader should also look at um, looking at technology that enables mobility. Um, technology should, you know, kind of enable a little bit more of a better flexibility, um, allow the employees to work securely, um, but, you know, you know, where they need to and, and on their specific type of device. Um, and also looking at something like automation, you know, technology should be able to automate, you know, administrative tasks and sort of optimize workflows. So from our perspective, you know, like the, the digital wellness aspect is enabling a technology that actually helps a user become more productive in the day, but also removing a lot of their, um, the noise that they're going to face, right? So to kind of ensure that there's some sort of, you know, productivity and mindfulness with how they're, they're doing their actual day-to-day -day work. Um, but, you know, all in addition to um, a lot of the other things that can be implemented within uh, ensuring in, in employee uh, wellness, which is like digital wellness apps and well-being technologies, meditation hours, et cetera. I suspect there'll be a lot of people listening just a little bit, feeling a little bit relieved that all the customers that you're talking to are going through the exactly, exactly the same thing that they are. And Nigel, I believe these are just a few reasons that you, why you wanted to take the lead in tackling this problem head on with something called the Digital Wellness Index. I mean, it sounds incredibly intriguing. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? As we've seen, uh, remote work comes with its challenges for organisations when it comes to keeping their workforce healthy and fulfil their duty to care by ensuring the same safety and health requirements to their remote working team members as they would in the office. This is why we wanted to step up and offer an all-round solution with our digital wellness index that can quickly analyse and identify whether our employees are struggling or not, prevent a situation from getting out of control and engage and educate employees on how to maintain this digital wellness. It allows you to promote digital wellness amongst your employers and inform and educate the entire team on the matter to help prevent issues related to work, remote working. So our wellness index is about promoting and maintaining a healthy digital work environment for the entire workforce. It's not about judging or checking on employees at all. It's about finding the right balance for each individual in order to keep the team healthy and safe and ensure business continuity and productivity simultaneously. I love that. Before we delve any further into the Digital Wellness Index, because I've got a lot of questions that I want to find out more about, Citrix, how are you helping customers help their employees relieve stress? What are you guys doing? So um, in general, we've actually created what's called a remote work series. Uh, we started this back in early, um, you know, early part of the year when we started seeing a little bit more demand from um, organizations that are leveraging our technology. And then how is it that they, uh, well, they were inquiring within our side of the, uh, you know, from our employees and our leadership as far as like how we enabled um, remote work and, and um, you know, within our own organization and some sort of best practices. So we created what's called a remote work series um, that our customers can leverage for their own employees. Um, and then these are set of like some, you know, certain things that range from like, you know, meditation and mind mindfulness videos, um, suggestions on how to break up your workday. Um, and then for, for leaders of IT organizations, like how to encourage um, digital wellness for their own remote employees. And then we outline sort of three steps and um, way we do is like, you know, define one of the steps is defining digital wellness I use for the organization. So uh, it may seem obvious, but defining set of the values to drive, um, you know, growth forward. And then that's part of the thing where we break it down to the, the three concepts I was mentioning earlier, where 
focusing on technology that improves productivity, mobility, and automation. Um, and then second, sort of evaluating digital culture, you know, you know, evaluating what's hindering um, you or your organization from achieving, you know, optimal digital wellness, you know, considering tools, technology, um, and enablement for leader- leadership within the organization. So like there was a court study, we said that 81% of respondent, the respondents felt, you know, decreasing burnout um, should, you know, it should be the top uh, priority for for employers is ensuring that you're leveraging technology to reduce burnout for your employees. I mean, enabling teams to um, encourage the culture of digital wellness. So it's basically executing principles by communicating the digital wellness um, and that the top priority um, for the team and establishing policies, um, you know, throughout the workforce and helping them stay productive. Love that. And just back to the digital wellness as, as well for a moment, Nigel, it's often said that you can only begin to improve what you can measure. So I've got to ask, where do you begin to measure well-being with the digital wellness index? Can you walk me through how it works and maybe provide a few use cases just to help bring it to life for everyone listening? Each day, everyone starts with a digital wellness of 10 out of 10. And then we use an algorithm developed by top academics in wellness, which looks at many aspects of how you work and what's the most appropriate levels to maintain wellness. A good example is having a whole morning of conference calls, which is exactly what I've done this morning, um, maybe on a different collaboration platforms without a break as some have run over. So your calendar, which may be giving you some wellness information, that would only show you that you had breaks and everything like that. What we're doing is actually recording exactly what you're doing on, on, in this time. So we, we would see it as three hours of non-stop collaboration, which is not good for your wellness. So your, my personal wellness index would have gone down because I've done that. And what we can do from that is, as we see these things, we can suggest that um, we take breaks or that actually we're not, uh, we're overrunning on various things that we need to extend the time, have less um, collaboration and more focus time. And, but we can look at all the different collaboration tools. So it's not just specific to one company, to one vendor. We can look at it across uh, all of these. We also realize, of course, that you may be using more than one device. And so maybe a physical, a virtual, a phone, a tablet, a Mac. Um, so we need to be able to have agents for all of these devices so that we can bring just the business data. So we don't look at the personal data. We just want to understand the business data that's being used, bring that all together, and then work out from there that uh, your wellness index and make sure that's correct for all the devices you use. So back-to-back conference calls and a podcast interview, is that going to be responsible for uh, giving your, your score a bit of a hit today then, I take it? Well, see, I am starting to learn a lot about digital wellness. So I yeah. knew that I needed to have a break. So I made sure I had my lunch hour. And which is what gets lost a lot is that we feel that we don't need to have that. We should work. Whereas actually, if you look at it, it was far better for me to have that hour off to relax and and re- regain some of my wellness before I did this. Love it. And I guess the, the elephant in the room for some people listening is that the, the idea of recording every everything that people do is that staff could feel that they're being spied upon. So how do you reassure teams that it's got nothing to do with spying and monitoring, but actually helping employers care for their staff and making sure that they're, they're looked after and they're not overworking? How do you deliver that message? Yeah, we were well aware that this might be a thought process many will go through but Absolute Digital is not at all about spying on employees but about caring for them and engaging with them as our focus lies on the fact that as an employer you have to have the same health and safety responsibilities for loan workers as for any other workers. Now where it was far easier to for instance walk into the office and see who's still working having a chat see how they feel noticing that maybe one employee who never leaves their desk and offering them to take a coffee break together, for instance. Um, What we're offering is a digital alternative to ensure employees 
are safe and well in their environment. This is essential since all the normal health and safety legislation that we see continues to apply and you have the usual duty of care to your home-based employees. Therefore, entertainment data, for instance, is shown as an aggregated data to management, but in detail for the user only. So the user can actually see what they're doing, but from a management point of view, they have more anonymous data. So it sees that you're doing some entertainment stuff, which is great because it's good for your wellness, but not exactly what you're doing or anything like that. Um, to us, it's essential to protect user privacy and put the user first. Our intentions are to offer support and guidance so that the results focus on this. Lastly, all the data will be available for the user within the apps to digital micro app integrated on the Citrix Workspace app. So we're developing a micro app for wellness that can go into Citrix Workspace. That's incredibly cool. I think so important as well. And I think when you're starting a new job for the first time, I think most people listening will be familiar with the dreaded display screen, equipment, workstation checklist, that DSE and, uh, environment, making sure everything's okay, and, and various other health and safety me- measures. But listening to you both talk today, in a world of lone remote working, it almost feels like employees employers need to invest in a new set of tools to look after the digital well-being of its staff and how important is that to citrix and indeed your customers name well i mean like all of us is from our perspective it's just it's about creating that seamless experience from a onboarding perspective like whenever a um we we've promoted this long um for a while that the easing the it burden of onboarding new employees by simplifying that process um, so the goal of that is just basically they just from access from from the ability to access their corporate resources is all through one single application, right? So they'll just download, you know, a client, which is our workspace app. And then the goal of that is just basically all of their core things that they need to do from um, for their day to day job is just right there. All of their applications are right there because they're all being published out from a data center or a cloud. Um, and then they would just need to remember that single username and password to have access to all their systems instead of multiple usernames. Now, that's just something that we've we've been doing for a while. Um, but going into and in the broader approach and sort of the future as far as like for present day, it's sort of enabling that um, improvement upon that. So, you know, we consider, um, you know, implementing a, a modern digital workspace, right? So um, we consider modern digital workspaces that have, you know, AI and machine learning technology to support digital wellness at work. Um, so like these intelligence tools basically learn how employees do their best work and optimize their workspace to fit um, fit them intelligently um, by rat- routing them to apps, data, and tools that they may, may use most often. And I was mentioning the thing about micro apps. So like these are bringing together all apps and files that employees need in, in sort of one unified workspace and minimizing distractions that can have a, a negative impact on their digital well, well-being. Um, so to further promote digital wellness, these modern workspace, workspaces can also use like micro apps to streamline and automate simple work tasks. Um, so this promotes digital wellness by allowing employees to focus on the more meaningful work instead of being interrupted by a request to approve routine expense reports or, or RSVPs for calendar invites. Um, employees can also customize how the automation and, and micro apps respond to different requests, requests that they're getting to ensure that the AI feature is making the right choices. Um, so for, from my perspective, this can actually help improve stress levels, anxiety at work while helping you know, workers get more meaningful work done in less time. So they can focus on work that they need to do for their job, but also with, with you know, actually ending their work day and, and focusing on their personal lives as well. Nissen has explained that quite rightly, Citrix Workspace gives you more of your the software at your fingertips. It's, it's actually helps in the wellness because you know where everything is, it's simpler and everything. And, and one of the things with Apps to Digital is we can um, understand and we can actually collate that data so we can understand who needs which pieces of software um, and convert them into micro apps. So we can do a lot of the work to simplify and make your 
the presentation of the applications easier to people, um, which will then again improve your wellness index because you're not trying to search for the piece you are um, you require you're authenticated in. So the micro apps piece is really important to us. So one, we will be able to understand who needs these micro apps. And also if those micro apps are already written, there's over 200 already written by Citrix and partners. If they're not there, we can actually develop and uh, create those micro apps and add them to the Citrix workspace. So that's yet again is improving the, the ability and the usability of your desktops. So yet again, will improve your wellness index. Excellent. And Nigel, do you think that software companies helping with digital wellness is something that we're going to see a lot more of? And I know it's early days here, but what kind of feedback have you received? Yeah, absolutely. You see a rise in interest um, in, and also solutions that focus on digital wellness already. And it makes sense going through a ban- pandemic, which has left us all vulnerable, um, has for many been a wake up call in a lot of ways. One of the side effects, as we call it, has been a more prominent focus on the person behind the job title and the family behind the person. So if your child comes in, if your dog starts yapping and everything like that while you're in a, in a, in a collaboration on, on any of the calls, it doesn't matter, you know, that's part of life. You introduce your family to, to these things. It's all part of, uh, 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 of the new style. So it's not just you being a particular job title, it's bringing everybody into this. So care, caring about uh, things like screen brightness and seat posture are two examples of things we could actually add into this. So it's not just about what we see, um, we can add things in. Um, we have many more thoughts about uh, integrating with HR apps, for instance, so we can report on wellness by gender, age, disability, country, race, anything. So we can make this world fairer and more equal. Uh, every single uh, area we talk to, every single company we talk to, have different ideas, and we're trying to bring the rest, the best of this all together to make sure that we're giving something that everybody can use and just makes the employment world fairer. I completely agree, especially the bit about in video conferencing and not being too concerned about things like pets, children, your spouse, and even the Amazon delivery driver popping in. It it makes you appear more human and not just this cold uh, corporate job role, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And um, that's really critical, as you say. Um, And the fact that you're home, you, you will be disturbed. And that should be not a problem to anybody uh, from all the way from uh, the employee, it's him, him herself, shouldn't feel worried about it. Managers, everybody should not feel that that's uh, a concern to them anymore. That's not how we should be looking at this remote working. And Nigel, I'm curious, did employees share their scores openly and almost have like a lot of banter and laughs about the levels in their teams that they've that they've used when they've used the digital wellness index because hearing you speak there and thinking back to the teams that i've worked with throughout the years i would imagine that it would be a, a great source of amusement and people wanting to share their scores and it entering the daily narrative of the office and the conversations is that what happens Yes, it's actually great fun sharing the indexes and discussing them. Uh, In fact, I had a customer today all sharing their individual wellness indexes on the team school. It was illuminating for them and their boss who was on the call and also had his wellness index. What's most surprising is the number of hours of collaboration time, for instance. And but that's the symptom of working from home these days. And Nitin, what is the future of digital wellness for Citrix and its clients? How important do you think it will be in our immediate future? Because there definitely seems to be a, a change in attitude, a change in working and how we're approaching things now, doesn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, there's like, um, uh, you know, since the pandemic began, there's a lot of, co- you know, companies that have enabled a remote workforce and a lot of them may consider just a majority of them just permanently working remote. Um, you know, in even there's a number of satisfaction surveys that are out there that shows that employees do prefer working from home um, because not only it helps them improve their their actual overall health and well-being, basically work becomes um, sort of fit into their personal lives where they can do personal things within the day, whereas before they would have that eight to that work shift, you know, they would go into the office, that shift would be 
just them in the office where they can maybe not do um, some sort of personal things, but now they can actually potentially mix things within the day. Um, you know, and it's all about, from our perspective, enabling that with technology, enabling organizations to help, um, you know, their employees be able to work from wherever they are securely. Um, and so it's about, uh, it's about making that balance um, from the perspective of how do you ensure that you're making these employees productive, productive um, accessing all the things they need to do work, but also removing a lot of the noise that's um, typically associated with technology. Um, so from our perspective, yes, it's very, it's very important for us because uh, as more and more employees are probably going to demand the, the need or, or requirement to work um, from home, we are seeing as that sort of technology enabler to not only provide them that, um, you know, that's that remote access, but also, as I mentioned earlier, like um, with the micro app technology, how do you ensure that, that that access that they need to do for work is tailored and customized to them? So they're doing efficient and productive work um, without being bothered by um, a lot of things that um, can hinder them being being productive. Um, so it's we've enabled our 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 software platform, their digital workspace, um, to help address some of the things that are going on today. Um, and then uh, there is also like um, how we're going to keep building upon that to ensure that we're making improvements to, to what that access looks like in the future. Excellent. Thank you. And Nigel, what role do you see flexible IT and the digital wellness index playing in the, the kind of challenges that we're facing ahead in this new world of remote collaboration and, and lone working? Well, with the changes of remote working becoming the norm rather than the exception, the rules and laws regarding remote working will be scrutinised as well, which we believe will lead to solutions such as ours becoming mandatory for organisations. The necessity of new tools in order to achieve the same care for health and safety as has been established at the office through the, year, through the years is inevitable. What's great is we can adapt our software to keep up with any changes to the rules, laws and thoughts around wellness as we continually record and store the data. So we can even backtrack and look and say, well, things have slightly changed. Let's have a look how that affects the indexes that we've already done. Uh, we use machine learning to understand trends. So as we get more and more data, we can actually look, understand, modify the algorithms accordingly. We've been really impressed with how Citrix have become actively involved in more than just the technical solution now and focusing on how they can help their customers, not only in wellness, but equally important issues such as sustainability. So this all helps wellness because every time that a company um, supports a business and supports other things as well as just doing your work. I think that's really key. It's time for us to use our technical ability and skills to help businesses look after their employees' health, retain staff, and also make the world a cleaner and greener planet. Cleaner and greener planet. I like the sound of that. And before I let you go, Nigel, if there's anybody listening today that wants to explore the topic of digital wellness a little bit further, and especially the digital wellness index that you've created there, what's the best way for anybody listening to, to look that up and find out more details and equally contact your team if they've got any questions? Yeah, so we're on social media. So you can follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter for any interesting facts and updates about our products. You can also visit our page at apps2digital, that's a two as a number, dot com for more details. Excellent. And finally, Nitin, I know there's a lot of great work that you're doing at Citrix as well on the subject of digital wellness and new ways of working. What's, what's the best way for people to find out more details on that? Yeah, so you could actually find out on um, our blog site, citrix.com slash blogs. You could search under the keyword digital wellness. Um, also follow our uh, social media accounts, um, which is basically um, at Citrix on Twitter. And then the easiest way is you can actually land on our digital wellness microsite. And the, the best, easiest way I could say to get there is just go to, go to Google and type in Citrix digital wellness, and it'll lead you right directly to a lot of our, our key things that we're, we're highlighting. It goes into a lot of the key resources, the suggestions that we have, 
um, the videos, the microsite will actually have it all categorized there. Well, a big thank you for joining me again back on the podcast today. So much value in that conversation for me because I think everybody's trying to navigate nervously through these uncharted digital waters at the moment. Every business is going through those same challenges and it is a new world of lone remote working. And for those reasons alone, I just think employers are going to need to invest in a new set of tools if they're going to look after their digital well-being of its staff. And it's something that all businesses will increasingly take seriously. But more than anything, just a big thank you for opening my eyes to it and hopefully everyone listening too and, and being a part of that change and leading the way. It's a big thing. So thank you, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. When starting a new job role with a new employer, we all have to jump through those hoops with DSE workstation checklists and various other health and safety measures. But having listened to Nigel and Nitin today, in a world of lone remote working, it really does seem that employers need to start investing in a new set of digital tools that will look after the digital well-being of its staff. And I think this is a subject that's only going to grow in importance. And I'd love to hear more about your experiences managing the digital well-being of your teams. And as always, email me techblogwriter at outlook.com if you want to contact me on linkedin twitter instagram etc i'm just at neil c hughes and my website is techblogwriter.co.uk and no matter where you're listening to this podcast in the world i think we're all a slave to that black mirror on our devices which is constantly bombarding us with notifications and it's something that you don't always realize until you're forced to go offline let's say if you're flying to another country or You sleep overnight and you wake up, switch on your device, and there is dozens and dozens of notifications that you have to scroll through straight away. But the reality is we're going through those notifications every minute, every hour of every day. And I do think we need to just walk away sometimes. But as I said, let me know your thoughts, how you're managing it yourself and how you're managing it for your teams, and I'll share it with the listeners too. So a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.